Hi class, today we're going to be looking at the scientific method and lab safety. So I like to start with these daily questions just to get you going in the right direction of what we're going to be looking at today. So um, first, uh, be able to describe five rules of the lab. Now we talked about this last week, so um, notice the date is wrong up there, but we talked about this last week. Just make sure that you can describe at least up to five rules of the lab. What we're going to be covering today is the scientific method and these are four main things that you want to be able to do out of our scientific method discussion today. List the order of the scientific method. Why is it important to have a control set up in every experiment? Explain how you set up a valid experiment and describe some ways you can present your data. So today we'll be looking at the scientific method and to define the scientific method it is a logical series of steps that help answer a question. Um, now, when we look at this, the, there's key parts to this definition. Logical series of steps. They need to be things that other people can follow or that you can follow yourself again as needed. And we want to try and answer some type of question. Um, it could be leading from an observation or it could be leading from something that maybe you learned something in a past experiment and you want to further that knowledge. So our basic steps in the scientific method, we start with an observation. Um, sometimes you'll see scientific method steps start with a problem and then an observation, and that's fine. Uh, you, sometimes people put observation and problem together. Um, then we go to a hypothesis, we experiment, we collect data, we conclude based on our hypothesis, and then we often retest immediately, and then we will publish the work. So observations. If you're using your notes packet in class, if that's something you're choosing to do, um, you can fill this in in that little box for observations or step one. So these are gathered through your senses. A scientist will notice something in the natural world. Um, you don't. You are a scientist every day. You don't have to be called a scientist. You don't have to be educated necessarily to be a scientist. You are noticing things about your natural world around you all the time. And you are working through those things and sometimes asking questions sometimes setting up some type of uh, variable or experiment to see what will happen as a result of that particular thing. Um, an example of an observation might be noticing that many salamanders near a pond have curved, not straight tails. So that is just strictly an observation. You're not giving any answer to why that might be happening. You are just looking at that particular um, trait or observation that you're looking at. So a hypothesis is a suggested solution to the problem. We usually write this as an if-then statement. It is also something that must be testable. So you have to be able to test what you are stating. So if I do this, then this will happen. It needs to be something that you can actually physically test. So it will help to predict an outcome. And our example of the hypothesis might be that the salamanders have curved ta tails due to a pollutant in the moist soil where they live. Now this could be written a little bit differently. We could say if a salamander is exposed to a pollutant then they will have a curved tail. And that would be our if-then statement. So to clarify that a little bit for you see if I can write that up there. If a salamander is exposed to a pollutant, then the result, it will have a curved tail. So we're kind of giving a solution or what we think is possibly happening. Um, this is testable because we're saying that we can expose a salamander to a certain pollutant that's already in the soil and then we can measure it. It'll have a curved tail. Our next step is the experiment and this is a procedure that will test the hypothesis. It must be controlled. I'll explain what that is on another slide. And it must provide easy to follow steps so that anyone could repeat the same test, including yourself. Um, in order to be a valid experiment, you need to be able to retest it and somebody else needs to be able to see that they could retest it as well to see if those results are valid. 
Um, a good or a valid experiment will have only one independent variable. An independent variable is what you change as the scientist. So an example, exposing salamanders to one type of pollutant and recording those results. So our data, it must be organized. Um, it can be organized into charts, tables, or graphs. And it will show the results of the experiment. There's two kinds of data. It can be quantitative, which is going to give us our numbers, or it can be qualitative, and that's going to include things like um, a narrative or a story or survey responses often are qualitative. So if you're asking someone um, how they felt during an experiment, they're going to describe those feelings. Um, they might have given you some numbers in some of their survey, but the part where they actually describe what's happening, that's going to be a qualitative response. Um, in our organization, um, we are going to show these data tables or graphs or possibly a combination of all those things. And the data is going to include the dependent variable. So this is one we'll talk about on another slide as well, but it's the things that are being measured. So in our example, the salamander tail length or curvature is what we are measuring. The conclusion is the answer to the hypothesis that's based on the data obtained from the experiment. The key parts here is that it has to refer back to the hypothesis. You can't just have a conclusion because you wanted a certain result. You have to look back at your hypothesis and give um, data, show the data that you've gotten, and refer back to that hypothesis that you stated. So our statement was if a salamander is exposed to a pollutant, then it will have a curved tail. We're going to look at that data on curved tail and see if it actually does show that they were exposed to that pollutant that then um, they do have the curved tail. The next thing would be to retest and um, usually we do this to verify the results. So if we find the results happen once we can't conclude that that is a uh, definite result every single time that we expose the salamanders to the pollutant or um, if we're doing some other type of test that it's going to be that result every single time. So we have to retest to be sure that that is something that will happen every time. A theory, then, is when a hypothesis has been tested multiple times and they get the same result. So multiple times, same result. And that's when something can become a theory. The last thing is to publish your findings. Um, for you, as a high school student, um, you may be publishing for a science fair um, or just a general project in class. Um, but there are some opportunities for high school students to publish um, their work in scientific journals. So if you're interested, you should see me and, um, or look online and be able to find some of those opportunities. Okay, if you're using your notes packet for this class, um, you can flip to the back of that front page and we're going to go over some of the key terms in experiments. So a control is a group that the independent variable is eliminated from. So we would eliminate the pollutant if we're talking about the salamanders. And this is the key part you need to know. It's used for a comparison. So a control group allows us to compare our real results to it. Um, so if we wanted to test something like caffeine and students' results on tests, we would want to have a group of individuals that did not receive caffeine so that we can see did the caffeine actually boost test scores or did it matter at all. Standardized variables are all the things that we need to keep the same. So we have to make sure that all the other factors that are happening in the environment for these salamanders are kept the same. We don't want anything else to affect the outcome so that we are just testing that one independent variable. Variables, when we look at independent and dependent variable, the independent variable right here is the one that you change. The dependent variable are your um, measurements. All other factors have to remain constant, and the experiment must have a control group. So some examples. For example, suppose you want to figure out how the fastest route to walk from home to school, or sorry, to walk home from school. 
You'll try several different routes and time how long it takes to get home by each one. Since you are only interested in finding a route that is fastest for you, you will do the walking yourself. So the variables in this experiment. Varying the routes is going to be your independent variable. That's what you change each time you go out. The time it takes is what you're measuring. So that's the dependent variable. And keeping the same person walking each time is the control variable. So one more thing, it's best to make several trials with each independent variable to make sure that your results are valid. And we also want to make sure that when we're setting up an experiment, we have two groups. The control group, which has no independent variable, and the experimental group, which is the one where we add that one independent variable. We have to make sure that we are also maintaining great records so that we have good results in the end. And that concludes the scientific method um, notes for today. If you have any questions, make sure that you check with me in class.